making your way on in. Come on, I want to invite you to have a seat. We're getting ready to have worship and, and be challenged by the Word. I'm so glad you're all here today. Chapel Hill family, it's always a pleasure to see each and every one of you guys. And visitors, we're so glad you're here today with us as well. And I just want to say a special welcome to you. If this is the first time you've been to Chapel Hill, we'd love to record your visit with us. And on, the, on some of the backs of the chairs, there's a little welcome card. We'd love for you to just pick one of those cards up if you don't mind uh, filling that out. And with the offering plate, yeah, there's one up in the area. It looks like that. It says, hey, uh, if you don't mind filling one of those cards out. And when the offering plate comes around, if you don't mind just dropping that off in the offering plate, again, we'd love to record your visit with us. Chapel Hill family, please make our visitors feel welcome this morning. If you don't mind. Amen. So glad you're here. Please make my hands come back again. Um, if you didn't pick up a bulletin, very important this week because uh, there's a ton of information on here. And I want to go through a, a lot of them, so make sure that you're aware of what's coming up. But today, youth, youth, there's a movie we're going to over at Humboldt, and we're leaving the church at 2.15. So what time, youth? 2.15, all right. We're going to meet here and leave at 2.15. Go over the movie starts at 3, but they want us there early. And we're getting popcorn and drinks. Uh, and it's about a two-hour movie. We'll be back after that. The following Sunday, youth, we're going to go through a, a study that's called Count Me In. We'll start meeting here at 5 on Sundays from 5 to 6 to go through that study that goes along with this movie we're watching. Today, right after church, quarterly business meeting, important for that. Please stick around, Chapel Hill uh, members, for that. Strength of Stands coming up in the year. Youth, again, uh, information is in your bulletin. Group Me app. If you have not, parents, youth, if you have not downloaded the Group Me app, that's our communication. Uh, please do that as well. Lots of information on there. Wednesday night meals. We just want to always continue to push that. This this week's menu is fried chicken. I'm telling you, it's going to be good. Ooh, I'm, I'm getting hungry now. All right, so uh, my children's choir, just a reminder for that. Uh, Fields of Faith. This Wednesday, I'm sorry, youth, one more announcement, youth. There's a change of time on Wednesday's Field of Faith. It starts at 6.30. We're leaving at 5.45 from the church. So please make a note in your bulletin on that. Uh, women's ministry events. We've got coming, something coming up September 21st from 10 to 12 in the youth center. Uh, new members class next Sunday. So if anyone's interested in becoming a member of Chapel Hill, we require you to attend a short information class on who we are and what we believe. And again, that's next Sunday, so please let one of the staff know that you're interested in coming to that. Creative Hand Scrapbooking Retreat coming up at the end of September. Information in your bulletin. Bird Choice Walk for Life. Car Show coming up in October. Revival in October. And candy Crawl, we need lots of candy, so please bring your candy for Candy Crawl. Again, lots of information in our bulletin. Please pick up one before you leave. And let's get ready to what, well, wait a minute. We want to do some welcoming, don't we? You want to welcome? Hey, if y'all don't mind, let's, let's have a, just a minute or two to stand up and greet one another and tell somebody you're glad to see them.
water. We gotta put we gotta put some kind of fluid on these seeds, right? Typically we would have rain, right? Rain is best. But we don't have rain. So I'm gonna give you a choice. Y'all like choices? Soda or water. 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 I'm so proud of y'all for making such good choices. What do you think would happen if we put the Coke on our cotton seeds? Okay. All right. All right. Y'all think we've done everything that we need to do to make a to make a cotton plant to grow a cotton plant? You can tell I'm not a farmer, huh? Okay. Now I think we need some sunshine, so we'll have to set this out in the sunshine this week. Okay. And we're gonna see if we can make some. Grow some cotton plant. We're hoping it looks like this. Okay. Right? We're hoping it turns into this. But we've done everything that we can do to have a good plant. Right? We've made good choices. You guys know that you're, it's the same way with you. That, it, that we're all the time making choices, aren't we? There are good choices and there are better choices. The good choices don't always help us to grow closer to Jesus. Okay? Good choices don't always help us grow closer to Jesus. The better choices are choices that help us to grow better, to, to, to grow closer to Jesus, right? And to be more like him, right? We want to be more like Jesus. We've got to make good choices, okay? All right. Anybody want to pray? Yay! I'm going to let you pray, then I'm going to pray, okay? God, thank you for these children. Lord, I thank you for this church that supports these kids. God, I pray that you would help us as teachers, as parents, as mentors, as friends. Um, Lord, as we um, have the privilege of being a part of their lives, that we would always point them to you to help them to make best choices for their lives. Lord, I love you and praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You guys, our uh, ushers are going to come. We're going to take our morning offering. Good job. Good job. Good job. See you. Have, have a good we worship. Have a good church service back there. Praise God for an opportunity to uh, see our children. Amen. It is uh, it's a blessing to be able to see them up here and to talk to them about Jesus. Amen. It's also a blessing to get back. So, uh, would you go ahead and, and bless our offering? We'll take our morning off. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and ask you to continue to bless this church, continue to inspire us to do great things for you. Be with all of our children as they grow up and let them learn the Word of God here in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
If you are glad that you are in the Lord's house this morning, say amen. amen. Praise God. There's a lot of people that wish they could be here that are not here. Amen. There's a lot of people that wish they could be here that are not here. So praise God for an opportunity to gather in the Lord's house this morning. Did you come expecting a message? I pray you came expecting a message. I hope that you have had some prayer time this morning. I pray that you have uh, spent some time with the Lord this morning. Hopefully you were in Sunday school. Uh, maybe you were in Sunday school. I, I pray that you were. If you were not in Sunday school, we encourage you to be in Sunday school. It's very important in the life of a believer to be in Sunday school. Now, with all that said and done, everybody look right up here. Every church service is different. Everyone. I've been to tons of church services. I mean, I've been to a lot of church services. And every single church service that I have been to is different. It's different for a number of reasons. Sometimes it's different because of the praise music. Sometimes it's different because of the preacher. But it's always different because of the congregation. The congregation is always different. There's different people. Rarely, if ever, I don't know that there has ever been... A church service there might have been where the exact same congregation was there every single time now maybe in smaller churches maybe okay but every church service is different and it doesn't have anything to do with the preaching it doesn't have anything to do with the praise what it has to do with is the congregation the congregation is different our approach sometimes is different sometimes we come expecting sometimes we come because we had to Sometimes we come because we were drugged. Sometimes we, were, we, we come because we were made come. And that changes the church service. It changes the entire church service. The congregation impacts the church service. You impact the church service. So are you ready to receive the message that the Lord Jesus Christ has for you personally today? Or are you just here because it's 1030 on a Sunday? Because that impacts the church service. Everybody look right up here. As sure as you are sitting in this church house this morning, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has a message for you. And it's up to you whether or not you receive that message. It's up to you whether or not you get the message. Amen. Look, we're in this thing together. Praise God. Everybody say it together. A couple weeks ago, we talked about we labor together. Last week, we talked about how we labor together and we stay together. And this week, we talked about together we fill in the blank. Because we stay together. We are the family of God. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter number 5, verse number 12. If you can and will, please stand for the reading of God's word. Please stand for the reading of God's word. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. We recognize those who labor a couple weeks ago and even last week to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Be at peace with the work you do, the labor you do. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly. We talked a couple weeks ago or, or last week about how we should help those that are, that are falling away. We should help those and speak truth into the life of others. Comfort the faint-hearted. Encourage and comfort those that are weak, that are timid. Uphold the weak. We talked about how we as a church body, if we're going to stay together, we're going to hold the weak up and help the weak. Be patient with everybody, even me. I know I need your patience. Be patient with all people, not just some. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good both for yourselves and for all. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. 
Test all things, hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. God, thank you for the opportunity to preach. I pray right now in the name of Jesus and through the power of your spirit that you would help me to preach the way you would have me preach, God, the message you would have me preach. And I pray the people that are gathered in your house today are ready to receive the message. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. So just kind of build a bridge from the first week to where we are. We talked about Jesus wants those who labor to be recognized. We talked about how Jesus wants us to have peace while we labor. We talked about Jesus encouraging us to do the work, warn the unruly. We're going to scream through some of these slides. You don't even have to put them up. We're going to be all the way down now in verse number 16. Together... We should be a people that rejoices. If we're going to be a people that stay together, a people that ministers together, we should be a people that rejoice. Jesus wants us to rejoice. Verse number 16, rejoice always. Not sometimes, but always. In order to rejoice always, here's what you got to do. you got to look for things to rejoice about, right? Because sometimes, hey, look, real talk. Sometimes you go into this world and it's hard to find something to rejoice about. So if we are not looking, if we're not searching out, if we're not trying to find something to rejoice about, we can live life without rejoicing. There's a, there's, it's easy to, you don't have to look for negative, right? All you have to do is walk out your door or pick up your phone or look at a news station or whatever you want to do. You're going to find tons of things that are negative. But for us, the scripture teaches us, we're going to stay together. What we're going to do, we can be a group of people that rejoice always. Look for a reason. I will rejoice. I am blessed today. I'm blessed with good health. Praise God. Everybody's not. I am. I'm blessed with good health. I have a good job. I'm blessed with a good family. I am blessed with a forever family. Praise God. All my children, all my grandchildren that are of the age of understanding have been saved by the blood of God, by by the blood of Christ. I am blessed. I look for a reason to rejoice. Sometimes that's the only reason I see. Lord, I'm saved. I rejoice because I know that I am saved by the blood of Christ. I have a roof over my head. I have a great church to be a part of. I get to preach the word of God. Praise God. I have a great Sunday school class. I love my Sunday school class. I am blessed. I rejoice because of my Sunday school class. I'm blessed. And for us, we need to be a people that are rejoicing people. I am blessed. I rejoice because I am an American. I live in the greatest country on the planet. I rejoice because I live in the United States of America. I love my country. I'm an American. I am blessed. I rejoice. I have food on my table, a roof over my head. I am safe. I rejoice, if for no other reason, I rejoice because I know that I have a personal relationship with Jesus. I rejoice. We choose to rejoice. You have to look for it sometimes. Some, I've had days, and I'm sure that you have too, where rejoicing is very hard. I've had days when rejoicing is hard. Because everything is going against me. I have all this life stuff that's coming at me. I have these life events. Now I have this over here that's taking place. And I'm just overwhelmed. And we all experience times on this earth where we are just completely overwhelmed. And it's hard to rejoice. It's hard to find something to rejoice in. But the Lord wants us to be a people that rejoices always. We should always rejoice. And we decide. You got to look for it. Amen. Find something to rejoice. Now, Jesus wants us to pray without sin. So we rejoice always. But then we pray without ceasing. That's not easy either. To pray without ceasing. But we pray during times of need. Here's what we pray. We pray during difficult times. Here's some things that we pray for. Lord, I pray for comfort. I pray for peace. I pray for health. I pray for restoration. We pray during times when we need God. Lord, I pray that you would show us the way. I pray.
pray as individuals, as a as families and as a church. Lord, I pray, we pray without ceasing that you would show us the way. Lord, show every individual in this church the way that they should go. Show every family in this church the way that they should travel. Show this good church right here the way forward. Praise God, it's good. Amen. We pray that he would show us the way. Order our steps. My sister in uh, San Antonio, she watches the services. So what's up, sis? She'll get a kick out of it. So, uh... She's getting old, too. She had a birthday. She's, she is old. So I say that for her, not y'all. She's getting really old. <laughs> right? Chris knows her. So he's like, I'm in trouble. But here's the thing. My sis says this a lot, and she is so right. What, sometimes she'll say, today and every day, something to this effect. I want the Lord to order my steps. And I think about that often. I am going to this place because the Lord is ordering my steps. And for us, what we need, as we pray, we need to pray that prayer. Lord, you order my steps. Don't let me take one step in a way that you're not ordering me to take it. Order my steps. Help me to step in the steps that you want me to step in. Help me to go in the direction that you want me to go in. Order my steps, Lord. And if it's not the direction that I should be going, then, then stop me. I pray in the name of Jesus that every individual and every family and the steps of Chapel Hill Baptist Church are ordered by the Lord Jesus himself so that we can stay together. So as we are together, we pray together. We pray without ceasing and he orders our steps. I submit to that. He's going to open doors and we know it. Jesus not only wants us to be praising him and uh, doesn't want us to, to, to just be praying, but he wants us to be thankful. Thankful. Verse number 18. In everything, give thanks. This is hard scripture. Can we just be honest? This is hard scripture. Rejoice when? Always. All the time. Just all the time rejoice. Pray how? Without ceasing. Never stopping. Right? And then be thankful. In what? All things? Sometimes I say, come on, Lord, really? You want me to praise you all the time. You, you, you really want me to just praise you all the time. You want me praying all the time. And you want me to be thankful all the time. It's a hard assignment, isn't it? And you know what? We fail. We fail. I fail. You know why? Because we all fall short. There's no way that we can. Look, real talk. There's no way that we can pray all the time, praise all the time, be thankful all the time. Because the earth that we're living on is full of sin, it's broken, and sometimes our enemy Satan, he wins a battle. Sometimes he wins a battle. If we're just honest with ourselves, I'm honest with myself, sometimes I am not praising all the time. Sometimes I am not thankful all the time. Sometimes I'm not praying all the time because Satan has won a battle in my life. Because Satan has stole my praise. Because Satan has stole my thankfulness. And Satan has stole my prayer life. And I'm focused on what he's doing and all the negative instead of what the Lord is doing in it. Sometimes we get beat by one point. By the number one team in the country. Man, one point. One point. Lost the battle. You know what? Sometimes you lose the battle too. Sometimes I lose the battle. And sometimes it's just by one point. It's just that one time, right? So I understand that what we're preaching and what we're doing today is hard. It's not easy. But Jesus wants us to be thankful about it. I'm thankful. Here's why I'm thankful. I'm thankful because we serve an unshakable God. Listen. We serve an unshakable God, a God that cannot be shook, a God that cannot be moved, a God that is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We serve an unshakable God. I, I am thankful that our God is unshakable. We serve, I'm thankful because you know what? Because Jesus is my fourth man in the furnace when the furnace is on fire. He's the fourth man. And I can come out without even the smell of smoke on my body because we serve a savior that can be your fourth man in your furnace when you're in the fire. 
That's why I'm thankful. I'm thankful we serve an unshakable God. I'm thankful he's my fourth man in the furnace. I'm thankful he's always available. I never bow my head or bend my knee to where my Lord does not listen to me, praise God. I'm thankful he's always available. He never turns his back. He's always listening. He's always answering. He is my redeemer. I'm thankful that he is my redeemer. I am redeemed by the blood of Christ. Let the redeemed of the Lord, what? Say so. I am redeemed. I'm thankful. I praise him because I am redeemed. Every awful moment in my past has been redeemed by the blood of Christ. I'm thankful because I am redeemed. I'm thankful that he shuts the mouth of the lion in the lion's den when I'm in there. He shuts it up. He shut. We all have been in the lion's den. Amen. We've all been in the fiery furnace, but we're not in there by ourselves. I pray you have a personal relationship with Jesus today. I pray that you know him. I pray that you've confessed him as your Lord, and you know what we're preaching about. And you understand that you'll never walk a step that he doesn't walk with you. You'll never be in the fire without him in the fire with you. You'll never be in the lion's den without him being in the lion's den with you. I am thankful he guides the stone. To land at the perfect spot to knock down my giants. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm thankful he protects me from my enemies. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Now, it's not anything that I've done, but I'm thankful. And I stand on that scripture and know that there's no weapon formed against me that's going to prosper. Why? Because of my Savior Jesus. And I can be thankful. And he wants us to be thankful in all things. Yes, it's tough. And yes, it's, the world is broken and all these things. But just like we search for a reason to rejoice, we pray all. We can be a thankful people. Be thankful. There's so many things to be thankful about. I'm just going down my list. Your list will look different than mine. I'm thankful that he protects me from my enemies. I'm thankful that we serve a God that keeps his promises. I'm thankful. He keeps his promise. He promises us to give us strength. Ephesians chapter 3. If you want to go and read Ephesians chapter 3 later, read that. Because he promises us to give us strength. When we are weak, he makes us strong. And he gives us the strength. Look. It don't matter what you're going through today. He will give you strength to walk through that. Why? Because he promises he will. And I stand on the promises of God my Savior. I stand on the promise to know that I know I live in a broken world and I'm going to go through things and experience things that are hard. And I'm going to be weak. And I know that he's going to give me the strength that, he, that only he can give me because he promises me he will. I'm thankful. He gives us rest. I'm thankful. Matthew 11. He promises to provide our needs. Philippians 4. He promises to answer our prayers. Matthew 7. He promises to give you everlasting life. John 3. Now look. I'm thankful because I can stand on the promises of God. And here's a promise that he makes. Everybody look right up here. He promises to give you everlasting life. You read John chapter number 3. And he, he promises you that he will give you a life that is everlasting in a place called heaven. In order for you to receive life everlasting in a place called heaven, what you have to do is you have to confess Jesus Christ as your Lord. There's no other way. And he promises that if you confess him as your Lord, that he'll save you and he will give you eternal life in a place called heaven. Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus today? If you're here today and you don't know him, I'm thankful that you're here. I'm thankful that he promises to give you life eternal if you will confess him as your Lord. Will you do that today? Jesus wants us to be sensitive to Holy Spirit. 19. Don't quench the Spirit. Some church services, the congregation is tired. And if you would just give me a little bit of leeway today, will you give me a little bit of leeway? Everybody stand up. Stand up. If you
If you can, stand up. Stretch it out a little bit. Now y'all have a seat. Because here's the deal. The preaching of the word of God is the most important thing that takes place on a Sunday morning. And what we do, if we're not careful, we come into the Lord's house and we quench the spirit. Don't quench the spirit. What we do is we come into the Lord's house and, and we have all the things in our life going on. And we have all the stuff in our life. And it's got us distracted and we're looking in all kinds of different directions. And we stay up too late watching dumb ball games when your team gets beat. And, and, and we're, we're, we're tired. And we come into the sanctuary. And then what we do is we sit down and we allow Satan to distract us. And we quench the spirit of God in our lives because of life itself. We quench the spirit because we are not focused on what the Lord is doing. We are not ready for the Look, I'm here to tell you, the Lord Jesus Christ has a message for you today. And if you don't quench the spirit of God in your life, you will get that message. But you will decide whether or not you quench the spirit. The Lord don't want us to quench the spirit. He says it in verse number 19. Do not quench the spirit. Allow Holy Spirit the freedom to convict you of your sin today. Will you open your heart up and allow the Lord to look into your heart? And will you allow the Lord to convict you of your sin today? Because we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's none righteous. No, not one. So will you allow the Lord to convict you of your sin? Will you allow him to guide us to the truth of the word of God? Will you look into the word of God and allow Holy Spirit to guide you to the truth in it? Will you allow him to empower you today? Holy Spirit will empower you. If we don't quench the spirit, he'll convict us of our sin. He'll guide us to the truth that is in our life, to the truth of the word of God. He will empower us. I pray every time I get into the pulpit that Holy Spirit fills my mouth and empowers me to preach the word of God the way that he would have me to preach the word of God. I pray that he would shut my mouth up so that I can't preach rather than preach something that the Lord does not want me to preach. He empowers me to preach through the power of the Holy Spirit. He will empower you to leave this church building. There's lost people look. The fields are wide. There's lost people outside this church building that need you to go speak the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit will empower you to go and to be a witness in the lives of those people that do not have a relationship with him. He will empower you. He will empower you to have a voice. He will fill your mouth up with the words that need to be spoken in every situation that you are in on this planet. He empowers us. Holy Spirit empowers us. He will empower you to come into this church building and during worship, he will empower you to worship freely and not be worried. Look, who cares about the person sitting next to you during worship? Who cares about the person sitting next to you during an invitation to get your right life with Jesus? It's not about the person sitting next to you during worship. It's not about the person sitting next to you during an invitation. It's about you and your worship. It's about you allowing Holy Spirit to empower you to worship freely. It's about you allowing Holy Spirit to convict you of sin. It's about you allowing Holy Spirit to get your right, your life right with the Lord. Not about the person sitting next to you. Forget about that person sitting next to you. It doesn't matter if it's your husband, wife, child, boyfriend, girlfriend. It does not matter. What matters in this church house right now is that you allow Holy Spirit to empower you to act on the word of God. That's what matters. It don't matter how late you stood, stayed up. It don't matter whether you were engaged earlier on in the service or not engaged, fall asleep, not fall asleep. None of that matters when you allow Holy Spirit to empower you. Because that's where rubber meets the road. And what we do is we come into the, to the house of the Lord and we quench the Spirit. Because Satan lies to us. Because Holy Spirit starts speaking and then Holy Spirit starts revealing our hearts and Holy Spirit starts moving and empowering us to make decisions, to change lives, to transform relationships. And what we do is we quit the Spirit because somebody sitting next to me might look at me crazy. Because somebody might think that I got something going on in my life. Well, you do got something going on in your life. Holy Spirit is speaking to you. 
But that's, we quit the spirit. It's like we're afraid. Satan lies because that's who he is. He is a liar and he is the father of every lie. He wants you to quench the spirit. You know why? Because he knows. He knows that if God's people come into the church house and quench the spirit, he wins the battle. Now we know victory is sealed, praise God, amen? Victory is sealed at the cross and the resurrection of Jesus. Victory is sealed. I'm going to heaven, man. He, Satan can do whatever he wants to do. I'm going to heaven when I die or he comes back. And there ain't no doubt about that. I'm going to heaven because I am saved by the blood of Christ. I'm going to heaven. So what he does, though, is he gets a bunch of people in a church building like this right here, a different congregation every Sunday morning just about, and he begins to lie. He lies before you get here. He lies while you're here. And he wants you to quench the spirit because if you quench the spirit, no change will take place. And he'll keep you right where you are. Satan wants you to be comfortable. You can be real comfortable in a church. You can come to church and you can be really comfortable. You can be so comfortable that you go to sleep. I'm just saying. I have fallen asleep in church before. I know. I have dozed off, man. I've got the holy elbow. Uh. Anybody get the holy elbow? I got the holy elbow before. I get it. Satan is a liar, and he wants you to quench the spirit. We're going to give an invitation. We'll pick up right there next week. I'm very thankful that the Lord is leading us to stay in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5 and just take our time and work through this portion of the scripture because it's important. How we interact with each other, how we live our life as individuals, families, and a church is very, very important. We need to be together. Together we, what? Together we find reasons, man. Together we find reasons to praise. Together as a family. Together as a church. We look for reasons to praise. Praise the good Lord. We look for reasons. We look for reasons to be thankful. I'm, thank, I'm thankful for Chapel Hill Baptist Church, man. I'm so thankful for this church body. I praise God for this church body. We look for reasons to be thankful. And then pray all the time. We, we Together we can pray all the time. I might not pray all the time. Justin's got my back. He's praying. Justin might not pray all the time. Well, sin has got his back. She's praying. We pray all the time. And then we allow Holy Spirit freedom in our life to change us. I praise God I'm not the man I was 10 years ago. I praise God he changed me. I praise God I'm not the man I was 5 years ago. I praise God I'm not the man I was last year. Praise God, Holy Spirit moves. I praise God, Holy Spirit changes. I praise God, Holy Spirit wants to be active in the lives of the believer. And I pray right now that you don't quench the Spirit. Whatever it is the Lord has revealed to you today, maybe you need to be saved today. Maybe you need to confess Jesus Christ as your Lord. Will you allow Him to save your soul today? Will you come and confess him as your Lord and Savior and allow him to save your soul today? Will you do that? Christian, will you get it right with him today? And Christian, you may have it right. A lot, a lot of people have it right. Will you praise him today? Will you be thankful today? I pray that you will. And I pray that we are a church full of individuals that are growing. I pray that we're a church full of families that are growing. And I pray that we as a church are growing closer to the Lord as a result of what we do here. And I pray that you'll leave different 
I pray in the name of Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit that you don't get up and leave the same as you came in. I pray that we always leave different. As we encounter the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, as we encounter the Savior of the world, how can we leave different? I pray that you don't. Will you please stand and we'll give an invitation. Lord, your way, not our way. God, Holy Spirit, I pray that you are not quenched now. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Y'all come.